How to spot an Alibaba scammer. In this video, that's exactly what I'm going to discuss. I'm going to be talking to you about how to just be careful and not get scammed on Alibaba because people think that Alibaba is just a place um, where pretty much you can just find cheap crap and a lot of people are just scammers. And the truth is, yes, you can find a lot of cheap crap there. And yes, there are scammers there, but that's not a majority and there are things that you can do to ensure that you that you have like a smooth um, transaction and a smooth um, ride with Alibaba. So before we get started, hit that subscribe button down there, the one where the big click is, and then hit that bell notification with a big click again. And, um, and yeah, and let's just get straight into the video. But before we actually get into the video, leave a comment down below now. Don't wait for the end of the video. Leave a comment down below now and just tell me, have you ever made an order with Alibaba? Right? Have you ever done that? If you've never done that before, then that's, that's still absolutely fine. Tell me if you haven't done it. Um, but let me know in the comments down below if yes, you have made an order with Alibaba or no, you've never made an Oli, um, an Oli. If you never made an order with Alibaba and what the reason was, maybe you just haven't had the time to do it or maybe um, you didn't want to get scammed and this was your concern. So hopefully this video can help you. So stay to the end of the video because I'm going to give you some awesome ideas about not getting scammed on Alibaba. So first thing you'll notice is that they have pretty bad English and I mean yeah it's fair to say that majority of people will have won't have the best English because it's not going to be their first language um, but what you'll notice and what I've noticed with people who are trying to scam you is that their English is even worse than bad if that makes sense so like, if you're just dealing with a, a supplier then yes their English, English won't be the best um, but when their English is really really terrible then start like looking for different signs to see if they are a scammer. Um, another big one is that they don't really complete answers. Um, and what does this mean? So they always try, or a lot of the time, they try to find a way around an answer that either they don't know the answer to, or um, that they don't want to say the wrong thing, if that makes sense. So for example, if you ask them about shipping, they may tell you, like if you say, how much is um, shipping gonna cost me for this amount? They might be like, oh, well, this this costs this and that costs that, but it depends on the weight and it depends on this. And, and if they're just giving you a bunch of excuses rather than being like, okay, it's gonna be this much per kilo, then that, that's the first sign, right? You're looking for straight answers from these people. You're not looking for stories and, and backwards answers and just roundabout answers. You're looking just for blunt answers. And just, just by the way, um, when it comes to shipping, a little tip is you can say to them, what shipping companies do you use? Because you want them to be using the main ones like TNT, UPS, FedEx, DHL. Those are the main shipping companies. Those shipping companies will have the most success when it's going through customs. And those shipping companies are just generally the best shipping companies. We've used others, um, not by our own um, choice, by our supplier's choice, which we don't use anymore. And our stuff got stuck in customs for over three weeks, just because we asked them to use DHL, they ended up using some weird courier. We didn't even know, I don't remember their name. And yeah, our stuff got really stuck. So now we literally just stick to pretty much using TNT every single time because they're great. They're really, really good. Okay, so what else can um, set off some alarm bells when it comes to um, when it comes to seeing if, if, if this supplier is gonna be a scammer? Well, they'll bring up money too often does that make sense? They're, they will, um, they will, what's the word? They'll, be, they'll basically, well, uh, they'll always link back to money. So they'll be like, are you paying? Have you paid? It's gonna cost this much. And even if you're just speaking to them, they'll always link money into it or refer back to money somehow. Um, now, okay, this isn't, these, um, these different things to consider, it's not an exact formula, obviously, you could get a, a scammer who's just knows what they're doing. And obviously you could also get someone who's not a scammer who's just very particular about certain things. Um, so these aren't exact, but they're good um, guidelines to go by. So so yeah, if, if they're constantly asking about money um, and you ask them for like a price list and it just doesn't make sense then, or they're not sending you a brochure or they're just, just saying, okay, pay, 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 then that's gonna be quite a, a red flag. Now. A good supplier and an actual supplier will probably send you their brochure, a catalog of all their products, give you a good breakdown of the prices, um, actually like barter with you on the price a bit, 
and um, and they won't once you've mentioned price right they might say like if you ask for something else they might say oh that will cost an extra but they won't constantly run back to the price so once it's been discussed it's been discussed and that's that um, so that's that's a uh, that's quite a big one because when um, <clears throat> When we um, when we had an order going, it was very weird. So and that leads on to the next one as well. So a lot of the time they'll ask for strange requests, that, like they'll ask you to pay this PayPal address, or they'll ask you to pay um, via this or via that or a bank transfer. They'll ask you some weird request. And um, this actually happened to us where we had a um, an ongoing deal with a supplier, and then it came to a point where we wanted to make a new order, and she asked us to send ten thousand pounds to um, a different address, like just. For some reason, and um, and we said, why can't we do the order of eight thousand? And she said, no, nope, it has to be ten thousand, which is really weird because if it was been if it would have been eight thousand, we probably would have paid it. Um, but she was insistent that it was ten thousand, which raised a few red flags for us. And um, we messaged her superior, and it fa and we found out that this person who we've been dealing with for months and months, right, um, up until like she has been great, but. Up to this recent order of the 10,000, she had been fired like a week beforehand. So she wasn't actually working with the company anymore. And she was literally just trying to get 10 grand from us to a separate PayPal. Um, and she was just gonna keep our money. So that is a really strange request. And um, it raised a lot of red flags. And luckily we didn't spend any money on it, which, which is really good. And lastly, make sure you are fully protected when you are paying. And there are three levels of protection you can use. Well, there's Alibaba, um, trade assurance, okay? And that means you pay through Alibaba and if there's any problems, you can just contact Alibaba and hopefully get your money back. They are very good with that. And then there's um, PayPal, using PayPal because PayPal are very good at getting your money back if need be. And then use a credit card. Um, so you can use a credit card with PayPal, but trade assurance is separate. Trade assurance has to come from your bank account, whereas PayPal and credit card can be linked. So you can link a credit card to PayPal, then pay with PayPal through the credit card, and you've got two levels of protection there, because credit cards will also help you get your money back in case of any scamming. So that is pretty much it for this video. Again, like I said, this isn't an exact science. I just wanted to make this video to um, help you realize that um, there are bad people on Alibaba, but then again, there are also good people on Alibaba, and most of the people are good people who are just running a business who will be able to supply you with products. And out of all the people we've, we've dealt with, everyone, and it's a lot of people, we've only ever had issue with one person. And this one person did the shipping problem and tried to scam us out of 10K. So this person was raising a few red flags. Um, so, so yeah, and when you're searching on Alibaba, you can click, um, what is it called? Let me have a look. Well, firstly, you can click Trade Assurance. And um, you can also click um, something called, um, um, hang on, let's have a look. For some reason, I can't remember it off the top of my head. But you can also click um, Gold Plus Supplier. That was it, Trade Assurance Gold Plus Supplier. And that will whittle down the um, searches, the, the, the listings to, uh, to good suppliers. And yeah, and so that's it for this video. Like I said, let me know in the comments down below if you ever dealt with Alibaba, if you ever dealt with anyone um, ordering, even if it's not from Alibaba, just have you ever ordered a product from China, like a wholesale product from China? Yes, no, why? Um, so let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hopefully I'll see you in tomorrow's video. So thanks so much for watching.